thousand. If you're five thousand, sometimes we don't go high enough. Ten thousand. There's two people with ten thousand in here. Could you please move quickly? If you're ten thousand, I need you to put your left hand up as you're walking. If you're the ten thousand person, there's one right there. I need the second one. Come celebrate. Something's gonna happen. I didn't come here because I want to hear about money. I came here because I need some peace. Well, honey, you need some money or you ain't gonna never know no peace. So tonight, I want to talk to you about the relationship between money and peace. A lot of hurt people say, it's not about money. It's about peace and it's about joy and it's about love. It's about money. It's about money. It's about money. I didn't come here to get anything from you. I'm already wealthy. I'm loaded. I got more than enough. I'm a blessed man. I didn't come here to get something from you. I didn't ride here on Delta. I rode here on my own airplane. You understand what I'm saying? It's obvious they're completely antithetical to scripture, but not just that, they are manipulating people by promising false hopes of getting so-called fabulous wealth. Has anybody not caught on to this? Wake up! What is the catch? You, in order to get these supposed free financial blessings from God, what do you got to do? You got to send them your money! Contrary to that highly publicized prediction, the world did not end over the weekend, which means a number of preachers who live like rock stars will get to continue living the good life. How good? Here's Lisa Guerrero and the iSquad with a look at some who've been preaching prosperity who are living large. Fresh wind! Fresh! They are some of the most popular TV preachers in the country. We're family here! They urge the faithful followers to donate generously, and in return, the Lord will bring them prosperity. I'm not going to be going to heaven and be broke when I get there. And there's no denying some people have prospered handsomely. Wow! The now pastors themselves, the they live like rock stars with huge mansions, private jets, and fancy cars. Their lifestyles are so lavish, six of them have been investigated by the U.S. Senate. Like Paula White, who lives in multi-million dollar homes in New York City and Tampa, Florida. And Creflo Dollar, he gets around in style, flying in private jets to preach around the country. He owns this mansion in an exclusive Atlanta suburb. Mr. Dollar, how do you Not one of them would agree to an interview about their opulent lifestyle. How do you justify your million dollar mansions in your jets to all of your donors, sir. Oh, yeah. But when it comes to opulence, few religious leaders compare to Kenneth Copeland. You and I are supposed to always have. To show you his house, we rented this helicopter so you could see his 18,000 square foot mansion valued at over six million dollars. He lives in this home outside Fort Worth, Texas. It has beautiful water views and comes complete with a boathouse. But that's not all. Copeland is an avid pilot, and here's his pride and joy, a $20 million Cessna Citation jet. It's the fastest private jet money can buy. He said he needed it to better serve the Lord, and proudly did a flyby for his followers after the church bought it. But it's not just one plane, we found a fleet of planes registered to the church. And you won't catch him waiting in line at the airport because he's got his own, the Kenneth Copeland Airport, located right next to his mansion. I think Copeland is unbelievably greedy. Ole Anthony heads the Trinity Foundation, a religious watchdog group that worked closely with the Senate committee investigating Copeland and other TV preachers. Televangelism alone is at least a two and a half to three billion dollar industry untaxed, unregulated. That's right. By law, religious groups like Copeland's are exempt from federal taxes and they don't have to report how they spend their money to anyone. Amen. Copeland's church takes in tens of millions a year through donations and selling books and DVDs to his donors. She sent them a lot of money, a, a whole lot of money. When Christy Parker's mother died of cancer, she found diaries that showed her mother sent Copeland most of her life savings, hoping her faith and donations would cure her of her terminal disease. What do you think of Kenneth Copeland's lifestyle? 
TV doesn't do it justice. Their office furniture is probably worth more than most people's houses. It makes you sick. Oh my. Copeland, Copeland. refused yeah, our request for an interview, so we caught up with him at an event in North Carolina. Uh, why you're living such a lifestyle of luxury off of church donations? Ma'am, I don't think we have time for this. Thank you. Thank you. Why won't you answer our questions? A hotel employee tried to prevent us from taping. Hey. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Hey, hold on. Come here. It's just a simple question, sir. Yes, and I'm going to give you a simple answer. Thank you. My lifestyle follows the scripture we give, we believe, we're open. You have a fleet of private jets. Why is that necessary? You're a minister. How many private jets do you have? That is keep a question. Right after that, he walked away. Although Copeland says he cooperated with the Senate investigation, the Senate committee disagreed, saying only two television preachers did, Joyce Myers and Benny Hinn. And the committee recommended that the IRS investigate further. When I talk about false teachers, uh, you could talk about a lot of different avenues and emphases and doctrines of false teachers. But nothing is more dominant in the evangelical media than the name it and claim it, health, wealth, prosperity, success kind of, of ministry stuff. Let me just give you a simple principle to keep in mind. The gospel is not offering people what they want apart from God and apart from Christ. The gospel is not offering what the natural man in his carnality and his lostness already wants. What does he want? What does every unregenerate person want? Health, wealth, success, prestige, influence, happiness, calm, peace. That's what an unregenerate person wants. That's not what the gospel offers. If somebody is offering people what they want in their carnal, lost condition, it's not the gospel. The gospel says, you're a sinner, you're undone, you must be broken before God, you must give up everything you have, take up a cross, and follow Him. And the return? eternal life. That's the gospel. So if you hear somebody offering people what they want in their lost condition, that's not the gospel. And that doesn't demonstrate the work of the Holy Spirit. Captain, we are being hailed. On the screen. I'm challenging you tonight to plant a thousand dollar seed. Now, you say, well, I, I don't have the cash. Put on your credit card. That's what she, that's what the Holy Spirit told her. And watch what God does. A thousand dollar gift. You say, well, that's a lot. I know it. It's a lot to her. But look what God has done for her as a result of her obedience. He's speaking to a lot of people tonight to sell a thousand dollars. You can do it by a check. You can do it by a credit card, by a debit card, however you feel it. Uh, I prayed over this. I've laid my hands on it. This prayer cloth is dangerous to the devil. Now, if you'd like to receive one, you can. And I was challenging people to plant a thousand dollar seed. And she took that challenge that night. She planted a thousand dollar seed on her credit card. And since then, God has given her a new home, uh, increased her finances, and her son got the Queen Elizabeth II scholarship as one of the outstanding students in his high school. God has blessed her. And she was telling me in the email how thrilled she was that she sowed that seed. The Lord laid it on my heart tonight. I hadn't planned to do this, but the Lord laid it on my heart to challenge others to do like she did, to plant a thousand dollar seed. Now, I'm setting my faith that God is speaking to the hearts of those he wants to sow. Are you one of them? Oh, your faith can do a whole lot when you plant your seed. Now, once again, let me say it. I'm not trying to get something from you. I'm trying to get something, God's power, God's miracles to you.
There would be, you know, gestures like when I would say Jesus, my arms would have to go out to when I would say the devil, I would go forward. And she had this incredible set of signals. There, like if she would say, oh Jesus, if I was going too slow. Or if she said, glory to God, you know, that meant you better speed up and go a little bit faster. Then later on, they came up with more signals like praise God meant, you know, you've got the people where you need them. You better take an offering and raise some money. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Lift up your hands and worship the Lord. Praise Him tonight. Hallelujah! Oh, God is so real tonight. If you can't feel the Holy Ghost tonight, man, you're dead and you don't know it. So why don't you praise Him? Why don't you call upon His name? Why don't you worship the Lord tonight? Oh, lift up your hands and praise Him. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! experience where you say you're saved then there's the fire baptism when you get the Holy Ghost and that's the tongues thing and they love to work people over you've got to like shoot in on this when you see people gathering around people and start laying hands on and praying with someone you've got to like come in with the camera too it's very important because they'll be laying hands on someone and the poor person will be saying you know thank you Jesus now this is a person that's already saved but they're getting the baptism and someone will be standing there and be going you know and the poor person will be standing there and they're not saying anything then after a while about four or five more will gather around and they'll start doing the same thing you know come on speak it out speak it out so all of a sudden the person will you know get so over well, by the thing that they start going, you know, and the next thing, you know, oh, that's it, you've got it, like they feel good, we got another one, you know, then they'll go on to the next person. I said, are your garments spotless, are they white as snow, thank you Jesus, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb, Jesus is so good to me tonight, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, I praise the Lord. Oh, glory, glory, hallelujah. I feel good in my soul. Wow. Praise the Lord. There's, there's one guy that gets into it so heavy that he's into, he prophesies. And he told me how he did it. He sat right, I mean, he looked right across the table, back and forth at me. And, and he told me how, you know, how he confiscates money. He says he's on this station. It's over 40 states. And, uh... He'll go on there and he'll be, get on the radio and he'll say, I know that listening to my little voice tonight, that there's some lady out there and you've got $10 put away in a cookie jar. Now God spoke to my heart and told me to go and tell you to get that $10 and get it in the mail and send it to me and God will bless you. God will give you a reward such as you have never known before. And then he comes back to me and he tells me, he says, if you're on the radio and you're going over 40 states, and you're on at prime time, you've got thousands of people listening, the chances are that there are at least two or three hundred little old ladies who've got a ten dollar bill in a cookie jar. And so if you even get, you know, if a couple hundred go over and get it and send it to you, that's two grand that you've made just like that. And so, you know, if you're going to get into big time religion, this is the games you've got to play, things like that. It's a, it's a, you go into it as a business and you work it as a business. For me, somebody's son is going to be set free from alcohol because of your thousand dollar seat. Somebody is going to avoid a divorce because of the thousand dollar seat. Some girl on drugs whose mama's been praying for her is gonna be set free from drugs because of a thousand. And what I make happen for others, Ephesians 6, 8, God will make happen for me. I don't want you to call until I finish my prayer. And as soon as I finish my prayer, I want you to go to the phone, dial the number on the screen, and simply say, I'm one of the 1,000. I'm going to faith in somehow in 90 days a $1,000 seed. You may already have the 1,000. It may be something you put aside for retirement or a college or a vacation.
You may have put some money aside that nobody knows about and God's given you a picture. It may be in the bottom of your closet, maybe in a sock, maybe between your mattresses. It may be an account that nobody knows about, but you and God, that's not your harvest. That thousand dollars won't get you anywhere until God touches it. Everything God touches multiplies. Precious Holy Spirit, I ask you for a thousand miracles within 90 days. I don't know who the thousand people are, but there's one thousand watching me that needs a harvest much more than they need the seed. They know, like I know, that they can't do very much with a thousand. Probably can't buy a real good sofa with a thousand. But we can bring it and present it to you for multiplication. Second Peter chapter 2 verses 1 through 3 says this, But there were also false prophets in Israel, church, as there will be false teachers among you. Wake up! In their what? Their greed. They will make up clever lies to get a hold of your what? Read your Bible! To get a hold of your cash, it's all it's about. But God condemned them long ago and their destruction is on the way. Wait a second. <laughs> you mean to tell me if you read the Bible, what a concept. <laughs> that in the last days, people in the church would be led astray into apostasy by false teachers specifically who would come to rip people off their cash? Yes! And here's my point, folks. How many people in the church are totally clueless to the prophetic days we live in. Every time you turn on the TV and you see one of these prosperity pimps, it shouldn't just make you sick, it should send this message to you. I better get busy living for Jesus. I better stop goofing off. I better start serving God. I better about tell other people about Jesus Christ before it's too late. Why? Because Peter says, that's a sign you're living in the last days. When you can start giving because you have an affection for God and you want to give, instead of feeling like, well, bless God, I tell you what, every time I look around, they're talking about money. Well, as soon as you get some, we don't have to talk about it no more. What? Every time I look around, they're talking about money, talking about money, talking about money, talking about money. <laughs> well, as soon as you get some, we don't have to talk about it no more. I'll make a deal with you. I'll make a deal with you. Everybody in Madison Square Gardens, if you will become Wealthy by next year, I won't talk about money. What? I shut my mouth up and talk about Daniel and the Lions Den. <laughs> Try me. Let 10, 15,000 people come back and say, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy. Pass that happened to me. I'm wealthy. Oh, I got my time. Oh, you should have seen how God did. I'm wealthy, I'm wealthy. I figure, hey, we need to talk about something else. Marriage. I like a thousand dollar bath because I like, don't like half hearted people, lukewarm, just we do a little. I like a thousand dollar bath of faith. That spirit of poverty is broken when you get to that phone and say, put me down as one that's going to give five thousand dollars. Tonight, I want to speak that hundredfold increase. If you will call right now and you will say to your counselor whenever they answer the phone, I want to be involved in the hundredfold. I want the hundredfold prayer prayed over my giving tonight. I will, at the time that God leads me to do it, I will lay hands on every one of those cards and will speak the hundredfold increase into your life. Remember the word to say is the hundredfold. Are you following me now? Get a hold of this now. Begin to allow the blessing to multiply your material investments. Now, if you'll notice in the book of Mark, they sold in three different grounds and did not get a harvest until they sold in good ground. Are you listening to me? So just sowing won't get it. If you're hooked up with some some, oh God, how do you say this nice? <laughs> you know, I've never really been good trying to find nice words. I mean, I'm, I'm a nice person, don't get me wrong, but if you hooked up with some crook that's not preaching you, you know, preachers get mad, well, y'all need to give some money. Well, give them some spiritual things. You have no right to expect anybody to give offers if you're not giving them spiritual things. What? 
If you ain't teaching nothing, y'all not get nothing. What? You understand what I said tonight? You got this in your heart? You gonna work on this thing, man? You want the blessings of God? Oh, Christian, they're not yours because of the work of Jesus. No. Tithe! Give money and you'll get the blessing. If you don't, nothing for you. What has happened to the gospel of grace? These charlatans have turned it into a gospel of works. And they have put people, wow, have they put people under bondage. This is one of the most disturbing things you might ever see. your bills paid throw money at their feet so they can dance in it what do you know it's a prosperity gospel with a string attached that string is works and that means it's no gospel at all oh man dr leroy thompson gave us a revelation that changed the body of christ money coming to the body of christ you know what and that was a word from the almighty god what Somebody said, ain't no money came to me. That's because you've been stopping it up. Yeah. Ain't no money coming to you because ain't no money came to him. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? Money, you get a money coming to me now. Not if you ain't sending no money to him. Yeah. I'm trying to get us away from fantasy into the reality of what it's going to take. That's it, boy. Hey, I said that's it. Free at last. Free at last. Good God Almighty, free at last. Hey, we gonna take over. They gonna have to listen to us. Cause we're gonna have all the money, have all the money, have all the money. <laughs> I declare. Let me make you listen to this. Because I'm, 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 the Lord telling me to say something. I declare in the name of Jesus at this pool will be the greatest wealth transference that ever transpired since Jesus rose from the dead. Money coming to me now.
Duong. I wanna dance, 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 dance all night. Hey! Hey! When I think it's good, that's what it done for me. When I think it's good, that's how it sets me free. I wanna dance, 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 dance all night. That's what he done for me When I think if it's good That's how it's been to be free I wanna dance, 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 dance all night Come on
Evangelists, that's right. The ones who rake in billions of dollars a year on donations because they are nonprofit ministries. Don't even have to declare any of this stuff. The men of the cloth don't have to tell anybody just how much they make or uh, even how they spend it. They don't even have to pay taxes. And now a Senate panel is investigating a money trail that leads straight into the pocketbooks of several of these televangelists. We're talking about lavish lifestyles here Rolls Royce, $2,000 suits. And that's just the tip of the unchristlike personal greed involved in some of these churches. Ole Anthony is the president of the Trinity Foundation. Uh, he's investigated televangelists for 20 years now. You know, it, it, it's amazing. I mean, uh, I'm a Christian, and I certainly believe in doing everything you can. And it doesn't mean that these guys aren't allowed to have a nice suit and a nice house and a nice car. But when you start talking about a Rolls Royce and a mil several million dollar home and, and private Lear jets and, and a $23,000 toilet, I mean, that's just over the pale, isn't it? It's, it's unbelievable. Somehow the church in America has been hijacked by greed. And it's uh, very, very sad because it's a testimony in how we are not caring for the poor in our country. I just think, and, and, and this is me, and this is the part that makes me crazy. When I think of Jesus Christ, and I think of the way we as Christians in many cases worship today, we are so unlike him so unlike him in so many ways would jesus do any of these things would jesus drive a bentley would jesus wear a two thousand dollar suit i mean would jesus buy a, a toilet worth twenty three thousand dollars well how about would he uh, live in a twelve point five million dollar mansion or drive <laughs> i mean fly a citation 10 jet or get plastic surgery for the man and woman so that they would appear nice on television it's 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 a travesty and it's I, as i said we are not caring for the poor the poor and the needy are who christ called us to meet their need not to become greedy money grubbers you've looked into this i mean here's a couple of the names that are being investigated now by the senate uh... and they're asking them to come clean and say look how much you got and what are you doing with there's one of them right there benny hinn another one is creflo dollar another one is kenneth copeland uh, Bishop Eddie Long, Joyce Meyer, Randy White. Who are these people? Tell us about them. Well, Benny Hinn is someone that we've uh, I've met personally with. He made me a promise he was going to reform. He was going to stop living in mansions and driving expensive cars. He said we have to re-examine our calling because some of the ancient saints lived in caves. Now he's I mean, he's done, he's, it's far worse now. He's got a $12.5 million mansion oh on the God. Pacific Coast, <laughs> and he doesn't even have a church. It's his parsonage. You know what's Randy amazing? Randy and Paula White, are, you know, they, they just got a divorce. They probably argued over who had the best plastic surgery. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a sham. And they... We're being hailed, sir. You got to stand by. Open a channel. There will be those that are watching, and I believe there's at least 1,000 people that are going to say, I'm going to step up right now, and I am going to give a 1,000 measures, whether it's a $1,000 or a 1,000 quarters or a 1,000 dimes. But I believe there are people that it's conducive to their ability right now to give the $1,000 or ten thousand God gets exciting <laughs> oh excited about thousand fold giving <laughs> and once you get there why would you leave it? why not walk in this lifestyle why not step up and stay up you know God wants you to step up and advance in the kingdom you know the number thousand represents unlimited power. This thousandfold blessing is not some kind of a gimmick. I hate gimmicks. I don't like manipulations and gimmicks. The baby was in jeopardy of dying. Its kidneys were blocked. She ran up, so to see, believe God, right then. She didn't wait. She didn't have time. By Monday, that child was declared whole. Come on, somebody give God the praise. See, when it's your baby on the line, 
when it's the thing you really want more than anything in life, you'll do whatever you can to get a miracle. Miracles aren't hard for God. That's a product of your faith in Him. But there's something about a seed. Every time I told the story, and I only share it when the Holy Spirit inspires me, babies start getting healed. Babies right now are getting healed through the airways. I have a nickname for God. I like to call Him Jehovah Overflow. Don't you want to get out of that cycle of being in catch-up mode all the time, always problem after problem, struggle after struggle? And Jeremiah said, God would raise up new shepherds, feed the sheep. God cares about sheep. He cares about you. He loves you. I've got a chapter in this book called Thousandfold Love. The blinded eyes open. The deaf hearing. And I said that right now, some deaf ears are, are opening up. And you need to go to the phone and give God the praise and the glory. And you need to put a seed in the ground and say, thank you, Lord. Now, a thousand dollars is thousand one dollar bills. Brother Claude said something earlier. A thousand dimes is a hundred dollars. Here's what I believe God asked me to ask you. I believe this is an inspired instruction of God. The Holy Ghost said, do what I told you. Now, right now, the Holy Ghost is telling some people the same thing right now. Do what the Holy Spirit's telling you. They rushed him to the hospital. They called us frantic. I told the parents, I said, you're forgetting something. You have $1,000 in the soil as a testimony of the goodness of God. That same seed is a memorial before God, and God's going to honor you. And don't worry about this. We began to rebuke the spirit of death. And for some reason, that thousand measure gift causes God to show up on the scene. The point is, and you'll see this in the Thousandfold Principle book, the kingdom of God has a number system. See, God bases everything on numbers. Your very makeup and DNA is based on numbers. We didn't know that till recently. But God knows the numbers of them. The Bible says that. Scientists finally caught up with what the Bible said about DNA. You see, there are people in this world who don't know God. They don't have any relationship with Jesus, but they're working the principles. They're building Apple and Google and Yahoo, and HP. But God has a better plan for you. And that plan is based on His promise to release an anointing that will unlock and loose prosperity into your life. God knows where that stuff is. He told the disciples, He said, when you go in there, loose the donkey and the colt. If anybody says anything to you, tell them the Lord has need of them. I'm telling you, can you imagine today now we think like, you know, we watch these old black and white movies. Well, it's a donkey and a colt. What if it was a Mercedes Benz or a, a brand new Ferrari sitting there and the guys from the ministry team of Jesus just all of a sudden stepped in, took the car. We call it Grand Theft Auto today, but just take it for the purpose of the kingdom. The Bible says, he said, if anybody objects, then just overrule by saying the Lord has need. Not 998, not 99. I want to know why. What is it technically that makes it work? And I believe God revealed this to me. And as Brother Claude said in the secret of the thousandfold DVD, and of course the book that I have, I explain that in great detail. Mm. And God thinks in thousands. Yes. He's going to come back and rule on the earth a thousand years. <laughs> come on. Okay, he's going to come back at approximately 6,000 years from man's creation. Yes. And it was 4,000 years basically from Adam to Jesus and 2,000 years hence and one more thousand and it'll wrap up. God is a thousand thinker. That's the measure that God thinks in. Right. Let's start thinking in that measure. You can do a thousand dollars, a thousand quarters, two hundred fifty dollars, a thousand dimes, a hundred dollars, or a thousand pennies. Every buck. got to see this. It's all over the TV, ripping people off of their cash. Let's take a look.
thousands of people from all walks of life have experienced life-changing results when they called for the Act 19 Special Miracles Prayer Handkerchief. She took that green prayer cloth and she slept on it. She went to the heart specialist and he said, I don't know what they're talking about. You got a perfect heart. You got $10,000 when she asked for it. Put your hands up and say, God, give me my blessing too. To get your anointed Acts 19 prayer cloth absolutely free, simply call the number on your screen. It will be your personal reminder that Don Stewart is standing in agreement with you for your miracle. Her glaucoma cleared up and she can see. She's cancer free, no heart trembles, she's off almost all her medication, she's a walking miracle. These people and many others have received special miracles such as those cited in Acts 19.12. When anointed handkerchiefs and claws were laid on the sick, the diseases departed from them and they were healed let the x19 prayer handkerchief be your point of contact for your special miracle fifteen thousand dollars you received a forty thousand dollar miracle you received eighty three thousand dollars a hundred and thirty thousand dollars call now hey how many guys are gonna call you better not raise your hand we'll lay hands on you oh but that's right folks that's just the tip of the iceberg Apparently, according to this teaching, once you follow the secret formula with your secret religious uh, trinket and, and how to pray for your financial blessing, that's right, these people personally promise to pray for a 100-fold increase to your generous donation. When you sow your no-weapon victory seed of $54.17, $100, $500, or $1,000 into the miracle-working soil of breakthrough, Pastor Parsley wants to sow into your life his powerfully prophetic message. The thing these Christian shows all have in common is that in the end, they always hit you up for some cash. Now, some do it in a pious spiritual way. As a special challenge, please prayerfully consider a gift of $1,200 or more. But not everyone is as prayerfully considered as those guys are. The master of the grab for cash would have to be this guy, our favourite, Mike Murdoch. A lady came up to me one night and she said, My ex-husband has not paid child support in 15 years. I said, sow a seed for $58 just as a covenant between you and God. Not trying to buy a miracle, that's absurd. But give God a seed of your faith, $58. <laughs> money at all. It's about planting seeds. And I tell you what, planting a seed in Mike's bank account really pays off. Less than 30 days, that ex-husband wrote her a check and mailed it for $65,000. Whoa, that's amazing. Yeah. Surely you can't expect that to happen every time. Expect a harvest. <laughs> expect it. Mm. Expect it. <laughs> Maybe you can, yeah. Okay, so it seems like all you've got to do is give Mike 58 bucks and all kinds of miracles are going to happen. That sounds like crap to me. No, that's not. Look, he even gave an ironclad guarantee. If what I have said about sowing and reaping is just for Mike Murdoch's personal gain, may a curse be on me and my ministry, and may my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. See, the man is prepared to cleave his own tongue, Julian. That's good enough for me. So I sent off my $58 to Mike. But amazingly, no miracles. Who would have thought? But the good news is that Mike has come up with an even more foolproof way of prompting miracles. God spoke to me and said, tell them about the miracle of the thousand dollar seed. Sounds great. Nobody's going to fall for this baloney. No, there's no way nobody in the church is going to fall for this wacky stuff. You ain't know better than that, right? Right now, every single Christian bookstore across America is full of this stuff. And so-called faith ministries are raking in millions of dollars every single year, tricking people not into seeking the greatest riches of all, Jesus Christ. They're tricking them into seeking cash. When are we going to learn in the church the only people getting rich are these snake oil men? False teachers. They're all around you. They're everywhere you look. A new one comes up every day. Well now, a new false teacher has arrived. I paid Mr. White $5,000 for an pen. I go get home and sign my multi-million dollar deals. I'm going to write with this pen right here. God will get the finances.
message to you if he can get them through God is going to speak to you to sow a one week salary. He's going to speak to you to sow one month salary. Get up and go to the phone and to obey God. I have confessed that I am in the billion flow and that I am a billionaire. Cash! 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 that you as a child of God have to follow Jesus. The Bible says that he has left us an example that we should follow his steps. That's the reason why I drive a Rolls Royce. I'm following Jesus' steps. That spirit of poverty is broken when you get to that phone and say, put me down as one that's going to give $5,000. I'm a spirit. And not only that, I'm a speaking spirit. And what I say will come to pass. This is your week. This is it. It's over. This is it. I declare, I decree, this is it. Money coming to me now. Money coming to me now. Money. You put some up here. Woo! Put, put this anointing on this money, man. Woo! Put some money. Put some anointing on this money. You put some up here. You put. Woo! Prosper. Prosper, I said. Prosper. Give him the money, Lord. Send it to him. Glory to God.
in money and walking in the blessing of God. Hey! You want your family saved? Get your money. What? They're going to come an anointing in here tonight. They're going to grab you like you've never been grabbed before and shake every ounce of poverty out of you and you'll never be broke another day. You are going to get your money tonight. You're going to get revelation. You're going to get anointed. You're going to get understanding tonight. You're going to get your revelation. Oh, God, what you come here for? What you come here for? You come here to get, get what God got for you, didn't you? I got to ask you. <laughs> Serious. Why are you even coming to church if you're not bringing the tithe? Seriously, what, what, what are you expecting? for the next six months. We've got people two hundred dollars a month for the next six months. We've got go, 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 don't look at me. Go to the phones right now, right now, right now, right now. This is your moment. Go to your phone, 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 go to your phone. Don't look at me, don't look at me, don't look at me, don't look at me, don't look at me. Go, 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 go. Go right to the phone. Phone, 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 phone. Go, 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 go. This is your time. This is now. You got it. You can't wait. You can't even think about it. You get a business signal. Now, now, now. Now, 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 now. The devil is trying to get you to think about tomorrow. Don't do that. You get into now, you get into faith, you get into supernatural. If God can stop the world for Hezekiah, what will he do for you when you pick up the phone to say, I'm going to plant my seed? Let me tell you something. Yes, God wants us build and build, but better yet, he wants you blessed. Step to the phone, step to the phone. This is a supernatural moment of now in your life. Peter, two hundred dollars a month for the next six months. We've got Peter, two hundred dollars a month for the next six months. We've got. If you just reach in and receive it, the blessing is yours. The business is yours. The property. I said the property. I said the property. It's yours. I don't care what they say on the title deed. God said the property is already yours. And all you got to do is reach in and receive it. Wake up. God is not some sort of cosmic Santa Claus. He's not some big sugar daddy in the sky. If you're rubbing the right method, you're going to get whatever you wish. Are you kidding me? He is God, and we are not, and he is not in our beck and call. We are his. And besides, I don't know, maybe you guys might find this hard to believe, but did you know that the Apostle Peter, he was profoundly used by God, and to my knowledge, he never once owned an Armani suit. He never once got to drive around in a Cadillac. And did you know that there's no record of the Apostle Peter ever chanting some Old Testament passage, take it out of context, over and over again like some Hinduistic mantra, which is exactly what it is, in order to get untold riches and increase his ministry? Never! 
But Peter did warn his folks specifically of this. And he told us that this kind of monetary manipulation would come when you are living in the last days. He ran. He gave $1,800 as a seed and he saved an entire nation. I'm serious. Y'all ain't hearing me. Right now, you could be saving your families, your household, your ministries, your, your houses, your cars by activating. Let me finish. Drop all the way down to verse 15. I have 10 minutes and I'm going to do this in a hurry. 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Make sure those checks are saved, sanctified, and filled in the bank. Don't be bouncing every time you become a spiritual extortioner. Once you give a check to a ministry and the check bounces. Because the, 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 the ministry has to pay for a bouncing check. And so you have stolen money from ministries once your church check bounces. That's why a lot of preachers, their ministries are not successful today. Because they have bouncing checks. All right, let me go. There's another, there's another 20 of you. Listen to me carefully. Listen to me. I'm not joking with you. I promise you. There's at least another 20 of you that need to give a seed. It's a seed. It's a seed of a thousand dollars. It's 20 of you. God is going to show you. I'm not. I, let me tell you something. When I'm like this, something happens in the realm of the spirit. Something happens. If you're the 20 people, I need you to stand up here. And it's a thousand dollars. I gave last night. If you withhold anything. And God speaks to you. I just need the, the thousand dollar people to stand up here. When you stand. Because we need to count you. You have a thousand dollars. Nobody's making you. You notice we don't have no music playing. Nobody is making you get up. The spirit of the Lord. And once the spirit of the Lord activates anything in you. The moment you move. Heaven is obligated to move for you. The moment you sit there. Let me tell you what's happening with some of you. So many preachers have bamboozled money out of you that when the real thing shows up, your spirit closes down. Because you think all of us are after your dollar. There are some of us that sincerely want you to be blessed. If you notice we don't have no music playing, you are not jumping. If you give a seed and you don't wrap it with praise, the seed is not counted in heaven. It's counted in the coffers of the ministry, trust me. But praise causes the earth to increase. What you resent is repelled from you. But what you celebrate, what you celebrate is attracted to you. That means if you don't have a thousand dollars, and if the thousand dollar crew comes up and you don't have it, the moment you celebrate them walking up, Say legalities, say legalities, say technicalities. Many people stay into poverty based on a technicality. If you don't have it and someone else does, the moment you celebrate up in the realm of the spirit, angels are watching. Angels want to say, that one appreciates prosperity. This one appreciates, look at how she's worshiping. Stay here, stay here. Make sure those checks are saved, saved if I filled in the bank. If you're, if you're using your credit card, that's good. Listen to me, something's gonna happen to you. Those of you that are supposed to give $5,000, Prophetess, can I have about them? These are $1,000 folk. I need the $5,000 people, I need you to congregate there. 5,000, if you're 5,000. I need you to get in one line. I need something to happen. We're going to buy. We're going to buy this land. We're going to, we are going to buy it. And we're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate prophetess. Because when you celebrate, you're going to pull that anointing for your land and your property. 
thousand. If you're five thousand, sometimes we don't go high enough. Ten thousand. There's two people with ten thousand in here. Could you please move quickly? If you're ten thousand, I need you to put your left hand up as you're walking. If you're the ten thousand person, there's one right there. I need the second one. Could celebrate. Something's gonna happen. Glory to God. I need you. I need you to put your offering there. Just put put it on the on the floor. Put it there for me, please. One more. Who's the other ten thousand? There's one more person. Don't 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 don't. One more person. And then I just got word from Prophetess that there is one person in here that should be sowing a hundred thousand dollar seed. would be the right place for you to start shouting because you are sending a message in the realm of the spirit that I appreciate thousand dollar seeds I appreciate a hundred thousand dollar seed and if you give it to me I'll give it to who is the person who is the person who is the person What are they? What are, what are these people? Stay here. Why are you going back? Stay, stay. Stay. I want you to begin to get your spirit together. Don't look for me to prompt you. Open your eyes one minute. I want you to get in a straight line. You are going to be the first to receive. Straight line. Shoulder to shoulder. Let your sister in. Put your hands down. You don't need your hands up where you're going. Trust me. We need ushers in the back of them. Everybody in the auditorium, would you repeat after me? Say, I release. I release. We need a bond of ministries. And Cindy Trim Ministries from all liabilities associated with this move of God. I understand the hand of God is about to touch me, and it is God that moves me in this dimension. All right, we have it recorded. You cannot sue anybody. When are we in the church going to wake up and call it what it is? This word of faith baloney is a false teaching and the people who promote it are false teachers. One, two, one, two. Yeah. False teachers. Special dedication to my brothers and sisters on the great continent of Africa. The saints in Malawi, Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, Zimbabwe. Don't be deceived by what America send to y'all, yeah. man. Let me begin. While there's still ink left in my pen, I'm set to contend. For truth, you can bet will offend. Deception within. The church, man, who's letting them in? We talked about this years ago. Let's address it again. Yeah. And I ain't really trying to start beef. But some who claim to be part of the sheep got some sharp teeth. Whoa. And cats get mean when you criticize them. But Jesus told us Matthew 7, 16, we can recognize them. And God forbid that for the love of some fans, I keep quiet and watch them die with their blood on my hands. So there's nothing left for me to do except to speak to you in the spirit of Jude 3 and 2 Peter 2. And I know that some will label me a Pharisee because today the only heresy is saying that this heresy. I will dare to be specific and drop some clarity on the popularity of the gospel of prosperity. Turn off TBN, that channel is overrated The pastors speak bogus statements, financially motivated It's kind of like a pyramid scheme Visualize heretics Christianizing the American dream It's foul and deceitful, they're lying to people Teaching that camel squeeze through the eye of a needle Ungodly and wicked, ask yourself how can they not be convicted Treating Jesus like a lottery ticket And you're thinking they're not the dangerous type Cause some of the statements are right That only proves that Satan comes as an angel of light This teaching can't be believed without a cult 
lost. The lie is you can achieve a crown without a cross. And I hear it all the time when they speak on the block. Even unbelievers are shocked how they're feasting the flock. It should be obvious then. Yeah, I'll explain why it's sin. Peep the Bible is sin. First Timothy 6, 9 and 10. It talks about how the desire for riches has left many souls on fire in stitches, mired in ditches. Tell me who would teach you to pursue as a goal? The very thing that the Bible says will ruin your soul, huh? Yet they're encouraging the love of money to make it worse. They've exported this garbage into other countries. My heart breaks even now as I'm rhyming. You want to know what all false teachers have in common? What? It's called selfism, the fastest growing religion. They just dress it up and call it Christian. Don't be deceived by this funny biz. If you come to Jesus for money, then he's not your God. Money, money is. Jesus is not a means to an end. No. The gospel is he came to redeem us from sin. And that is the message forever I'll yell. Down. If you're living your best life now, you're headed for hell. Talk to him. Joe Alstein. Alstein. Let him know. Crepo Dollar is a false teacher. Well, well, Benny Hinn is a false teacher. I know they're popular, but don't let them deceive ya. Talk to him. TD Jakes is a false teacher. Count the truth. Joyce Meyer is a false teacher. Let him know. Paula White is a false teacher. Use your discernment, let the Bible lead ya. Keep going. Fred Price is a false teacher. Count the truth. Kenneth Copeland is a false teacher. Well, well, Robert Tilton is a false teacher. I know they're popular, but don't let them deceive Sweets of gold. I don't need gold in heaven. I gotta have it now. I mean, when I get to glory, all my bills will be paid, brother. I won't have bills in glory. I won't need to worry about bills in glory. I can have it here. You say, well, Benny, isn't that wonderful to have gold, sweets, and glory? Well, of course. But if I hear the thing one more time of how it will be and how it was, I'm gonna kick somebody. <laughs> Get you out of this malaise of thinking that Jesus and the disciples were poor and then relating that to you, thinking that you as a child of God have to follow Jesus. The Bible says that he has left us an example that we should follow his steps. That's the reason why I drive a Rolls Royce. I'm following Jesus' steps. I don't know where these goofy traditions creep in at, but one of the goofiest ones is that Jesus and his disciples were poor. Now, there's no Bible to substantiate that. You can talk about me all you want while I'm driving by in my Rolls Royce that's paid for and I got the pink slip on it. Talk all you want. Bad mouth all you want. Don't hurt me in the least. Don't bother me. It's a whole lot easier to be persecuted when I'm riding in my car and I got the pink slip than it is when I'm riding in the car and owe my soul to the company store. I'll say yes, Lord. Tilton takes in so much money, he makes other TV ministers look like amateurs. And I want you to make a thousand dollar vow of faith. Oh, I know you probably don't have a thousand dollars, but vow it. Try to find out how much money Tilton makes and you discover the ministry is shrouded in secrecy. The pastor has bodyguards. His offices are sealed off with armed security and surveillance cameras. But Primetime obtains some of Tilton's financial documents. These are daily deposits, and based on these, Tilton's followers send his ministry conservatively $80 million a year, tax-free. It's all about the automatic withdrawal. Say it with me, automatic withdrawal. I want every single person here, even if you don't fill it out, just act like you do, okay? Just act like you do. Every single person, get one of these. At all of our campuses, Miami, you pick these up. Plan out, they're in the seat backs. Blue card. Blue card, blue card. Now, if you don't have one of these cards, man, you're looking pretty foolish right now. I'll pick a card up because we got security cameras that are awesome that you can't see. And we'll put this on YouTube. You know why I love to talk about this? Because I do it. I've been doing this man for 29 years. I cannot thank God enough. Am I saying your life's going to be problem free? No. But you know what leaders do, guys? Leaders look for a problem to solve, and that problem is usually a promotion to the land of more than enough. So guys, you're the leaders here, man. It's time for you to step up. It's time for you to step up. Your woman wants you to lead. You want to be a spiritual leader? How can I be a spiritual leader, Ed? I just want to be a spiritual leader. I really want to be a spiritual leader. Bring the tithe! Bring the tithe! 
Again, how many more people show up here? Uh, seriously, how, how do you guys show up and expect a blessing without this? <laughs> You're wasting your time and God's time. So we're not going to do it anymore. We're going to bring it. And God's causing breakthrough right now. All right, fill this out if you would. Bank information. Your bank name? Johnny Doe. Tony Romo. I don't know. $55 million? Who's paying for that? Go go girls? What? 80% of the stadium is wasted? Who's paying for that? I'll never get invited to a Cowboys game now. You know what? Jerry Jones needs this. Somebody send it to him. All right. Routing number, so does Mark Cuban. Routing number? Because we need to pray for both of them. They lost his geese. Routing number? I would tell him that too. I love when I have my back turned because people leave then. That's all right. That's all right. Routing number and account number. It's getting hotter than fish grease up in here. Write that down. That's all right. We have a lot of churches of the blessed subtraction in the area. Go there. That's cool. They don't, you know, they don't really talk about this very much. So we'll get in your grill fellowship. I'm telling you, we will. Because God gets in our grill all the time. We will. We're a church that will challenge you, man. We're comforted by Christ, but uncomfortable for Him. It's not always comfortable to bring the tithe. But I'm telling you, you do it, and you'll live in the land of more than enough. Withdrawal options weekly. For Lisa and I, it's twice monthly. Uh, monthly, whatever. Write that down. Print your name. Sign it, email, etc. Now, Ed, I don't know my routing number. Ask your wife. Seriously, if you don't know it, some of you don't, just take it home and find the routing number out. And you can mail this into our business office or you can drop it in the plate next week. But 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 don't delay. I'm in debt. Tithe. Ah, man, it's just so difficult, these student loans. Tithe. What, what, God's going to show up in so many crazy ways, you won't believe it. I don't think it's an accident that they showed up today. That's generosity. I'm telling you, man, when you begin to tithe, over and above your tithe is generosity. Well, I tithe to a nonprofit. It's not the church. I tithe to a Christian school. Not the church. I tithe to a missionary organization. Not the church. I tithe to this university. Not the church. I tithe to this person who works in the ministry. It's not the church. It's not the church. Fill that out. After you fill that out, everybody wave it. Everybody. Wow, most of you are. That's good. More than 20%. Awesome, man. Awesome. You're sure your first fruits will go to that house. Now, when we pass the offering plate, in a couple of moments, just drop this in the offering plate. If you want to think about it, fill it out, pray about it. It's really, it's really a dumb prayer. You don't have to pray about tithing. That's a dumb prayer. It's already been said. Don't pray about something that's already in the book. What am I saying? Pray about it. There's no use to pray about it. Just do it. If you want to do it, live under a curse. That's fine. I can go, man, I can give you a list of people. Oh, I've sat down and begged. Please. Please. But you know what? God doesn't need your money. He doesn't need my money. Your money. Oh, okay. No. He just wants us to live in the blessed place and to be the most effective people out there. And that's what he has for all of us. So, the math is pretty simple. Whatever you make, 10%. What do I do the gross of the net? What do you want God to bless? Gross or net? Good question. So, we do gross. It's for us. Again, again, I want as much blessing as possible in my life. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about just money. Hope you hear it. I'm blessed in ways money can't touch, too. Could not my marriage and my kids and opportunities and just be around, be a part of the greatest church in the world. You can't even put a price tag on that. Are you kidding me? I mean, yeah, God's taking care of us financially, but I mean, come on, man. It's more than that. I hope you know that. Wow. But some of you are going to be rich because of what the future is for here. Now, I'm not that smart. You're not either. God's just going to get it to you because he knows he get it through you to the greatest thing in the world, the church. So put these in the plate now. We're going to receive our offering. It is time for us to bring the offering. So I want to challenge you to do that. 
For every $3,000 you give NIIC, you get a $500,000 sum of money to do what you will. And you can use it to pay your employees, buy vehicles for your church, and build, build the church that you've been dreaming of. Pastor Donald Downey runs Heart to Heart Ministries in Fort Washington, Maryland. Any pastor needs his own church. You know, we need to own our own building. In the fall of 2001, Downing dreams of building a new church and hopes Abraham Kennard is the answer to his prayers. He said, no, I can't promise you the moon, but I can promise you this. This is what we're going to do, but you got to have faith. He said, but if you don't have faith, don't come in. Downing pulls together $9,000. I borrowed 6000 but I had 3000 of my own money. It's not an easy payment, but Downing hopes the small sacrifice now will pay off later. I saw people getting paid. That was the, that's what broke the camel back for me. Kennard promises Downing that in 90 days, the $9,000 investment will return $1.5 million. That's a staggering 16,000% return. God has been good. Oh, good to me. I was so excited. I, I went out and told everybody, I, our troubles are over now. Finally, God has answered my prayer. <laughs> I've got a notion that you're getting a promotion. Word of the program travels quickly, making its way to Pastor William Tony in Atlanta, Georgia. Well, it came across like it was a helping hand situation that, you know, this organization was going to help churches. It was a person that was concerned about ministry, concerned about church. Tony scrapes $3,000 together. He's promised to receive half a million in return, money he'll use to extend his outreach. My church's vision is if you change a person's mindset, God can take them from where they are to who they are. And to be able to you know, have the funding to help us empower that community, it was a great idea. It was a great thing to be done. And Kennard sweetens the deal by offering incentives to pastors who recruit other churches. For every church you brought in, you would receive $500. They believed in Mr. Kennard. They went out and sold the program, as Mr. Kennard had explained it. If you sit back and talk to three or four people a day and you get two or three to join, that's not a bad day. That's $1,500 a day. That's not a bad day at all. So a lot of pastors got involved and they went and they worked. Pastors spread the word and in less than a year, hundreds of new churches sign on and send Kennard cash. In return, they are hoping for big paydays. Get you out of debt is just one thing, baby. Where do you get your million in your pocket? <laughs> the plan appears to be working. In the spring of 2002, at meetings across the country, Kennard hands out check after check after check, many in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. It was almost like a church service. They had singing groups, testimonies. I'm in here still believing miracles. And you were there, you watching them give people checks. To make it vision! But it turns out the oversized checks are underfunded and just for show. Kennard is actually paying out just a fraction of what he has promised. Not getting the whole lump sum, you can't go out and get a new building with $1,900 a week. Still, to struggling churches, a portion of the money is proof that the program works. For a small ministry, $1,900, that's almost $8,000 a month. That is a big blessing. This was obviously done to keep them happy, or at least keep them satisfied that there was really some money out there so that they would go out and continue to recruit other pastors and they could say certainly obviously uh, I've gotten some money so I think it's legitimate. Kennard's plan seems to be a blessing from above but behind the scenes the operation is crumbling. When American Greed returns the faith of the pastors is put to the test. Your gut feelings begin to kick in and say okay something is not right. 
E-Trade has everything you need to replan your retirement. Start with Retirement Quick Plan. Fund your account with Quick Transfer. For the payout. On July 26th, Kennard takes the stage. Now, I know many of you anticipate walking across the stage tonight with your check. Then he drops a bombshell. He says there won't be any payouts. But you won't be tonight walking across the stage with your check. The whole place was in pandemonium, and many preachers were crying, many were angry. How many of you judging me right now? If you're judging me, you're judging God. But pastors try to keep the hope alive. Faith is, is reaching out into nothing, and grabbing hold to just something, and waiting for it to manifest. While church leaders head home empty-handed, Kennard and his entourage take a trip to Disney World. He spent around six thousand uh, dollars. Had a great time at Disney World after he just destroyed the hopes of uh, all these pastors. It, it gets sick in your stomach to know that you've been, you know, deceived, and and you've been used to deceive someone else. You really get angry. When I kept hearing the delays, when I kept listening to the conference calls, that's when I got suspicious that something is wrong here. We began receiving calls from churches who had invested money with Mr. Kennard. We've invested this money. We're not getting our money. Please help us. In July of 2002, FBI Special Agent Tim Coakley takes the case and begins looking into Abraham Kennard's investment program. There was thousands of people calling him wanting their money back or demanding their their grant money. Coakley suspects Kennard is operating a fraud and that hundreds of churches have been victimized. On January 29, 2003, FBI agents raid Kennard's Georgia estate. They seize boxes of bank statements and business records. What they cannot find is any proof of wealthy investors backing the program. We were unable to find any investors. We found many representations made by him that he had investors. We found videotaped evidence of him claiming there were investors. Put all of that information together and you have a clear-cut case of, of fraud. Investigators discover that in less than two years, Abraham Kennard conned more than 1,600 churches out of about $9 million. We did the math and uh, it would have been over a billion to pay what he promised he would pay. Of the nine million he took in, Kennard handed out just 1.3 million back to pastors during church meetings. The rest of the money was used to fund his lavish lifestyle, including 23 vehicles and property in Georgia. He operated on that money. He lived on that money. Uh, he bought a lot of cars and toys with that money. And very proud of it, taking pictures of himself on beds covered in $100 bills traveling and by limousine, traveling to Las Vegas, traveling to the Bahamas, taking cruises. He had a party. He, he brought boats. Uh, he was flying first class. He, he scammed a lot of good people. Investigators also discover Kennard is an ex-con and has tried to run similar schemes before. And it wasn't until he put God behind this and the religious theme that it ever worked and gaining the trust of some well-respected pastors and getting them to believe in him is how this thing took off. In January of 2004, Kennard is charged with money laundering and mail fraud. Authorities prepare to make the arrest. But when American Greed returns, investigators discover the false prophet is nowhere to be found and the hunt is on. natural forces on the planet. Contact with it could make you millions. And we'll show you the secret. After five weeks on the run, a tip leads authorities to the small town of Okalona, Mississippi. On February 24th, the Tupelo Police Department and the FBI SWAT team prepare to make the arrest. I was able to track them and their movements, but I was always about a day or two behind. After five weeks on the run, 
a tip leads authorities to the small town of Okalona, Mississippi. On February 24th, the Tupelo Police Department and the FBI SWAT team prepare to make the arrest. We drove up to the residence and our team exited our vehicle and we took a position of cover behind some of our vehicles. And Mr. Kennard came out with his hands up, making sure that we knew that there was no threat involved. The game is finally up for Abraham Kennard. It was very quiet. He did not resist. And uh, they took him into custody and took him back to Atlanta. One year later, Abraham Kennard stands trial for fraud. From the beginning, he sidelines his court-appointed attorney. Abraham Kennard gave his own opening statement and at one point looked at the jury and said that the government was trying to hang him on the cross and put his arms up like this. And Pastor John Payton is one of 17 church leaders to take the stand. He will always claim he was in the spirit. It's almost like he was going to blame God for anything he did. God led me to do that. God told me to say that. After cross-examining a half-dozen witnesses, Kennard puts the case back into his attorney's hands. His claim was that he did not do the things that he did with the goal or notion of trying to victimize these ministries, these people. He truly intended to try and assist and help them. And it was, in large measure, the government's intervention in freezing his accounts that prevented him from completing his his goals it's an argument that's difficult to make we had more evidence in this case than I've ever had in any case in a 20-year law enforcement career I want you to know me the smooth talking swindler can't preach his way out of this one on February 7 2005 the jury convicts Abraham Kennard of 116 counts including mail fraud, money laundering, and income tax evasion. He's sentenced to 17 years in prison and ordered to pay nearly $8 million in restitution. But Kennard's victims will see very little of their investment return. The people that relied on him did so because they had faith in God. And uh, most of them needed that money desperately and saw him as in effect their savior mighty, mighty, mighty good. So Donald Downing put his trust in Kennard but the ten churches Downing recruited put their trust in him and today he's lost more than money you can't put a price in losing a friend every pastor that I brought in no longer talk with me the strong bond that once tied this pastoral brotherhood together now seems strained. But they say their faith in God remains steadfast. We're Christians, so we're supposed to forgive. We're supposed to love in spite of. So who am I to actually harbor unforgiveness in my heart over a situation that the government has already stepped in and rendered punishment? But for many, the betrayal runs deep. And not all of Kennard's victims are ready to forgive. He betrayed his own people. He ripped off his own neighborhood. He took from those who already didn't have much. Anybody who will steal from the church, I don't care what color they are. I don't care if they're a pastor or a pauper. Anybody who will steal for the church, I believe there's a special place in hell for them. That's what I believe. And in a moment, new information on Robert Tilton. We'll tell you what's happened to him since our report first aired. So what happened after our report and after Robert Tilton took to the airways to denounce us? I'm not love stupid, but I ain't stupid. The day after our report, Tilton flatly denied that prayer requests are thrown away before he sees them. He said the ones in our piece had been stolen and made to look like trash. <laughs> Cheap shot. Totally yellow journalism. I mean... In fact, Tilton insisted he had prayed over so many letters it made him sick. 
those prayer request forms have ink on them and uh, all kinds of chemicals. I laid on top of those prayer requests so much that the chemicals actually got into my bloodstream, began to swell my capillaries, and I had two small strokes in my brain that brought about some numbness in my body. He said that's what forced him to get that plastic surgery. Yeah, I had the, my eyes worked on to try to get the serious bags out from under my eyes and how all those chemicals had messed them up. And Tilton said he bought the mansion in California and the retreat in Florida and the big boat because after all the praying, he needed some rest. So what? I never preached poverty to you. I said God would provide you with the best. Am I not supposed to? I can tell you, you can have the best, but I ain't supposed to have nothing. Get that religious garbage out of your brain. So this is what Tilton was saying last November. I lay my hands personally on every prayer request that comes in either the phone center or comes in through the mail. But four months later, here is Tilton in a videotaped deposition with the Texas Attorney General's office, which they recently released to the press over Tilton's objection. In it, Tilton admits he doesn't really pray over every prayer request at all. Not all of them are the original prayer requests. Some uh, are on a computer printout with their specific kind of prayer that they want me to pray. So I don't get the actual document of some of them. And what happens to the actual document? So do we. And in her deposition, Tilton's wife acknowledged that Tilton's so-called personal letters were not handwritten by him. Is the handwriting on the bail pieces actually Mr. Tilton's handwriting? No, it is not. Is it part of a, a graphics program that you have? It's one of the artists. And who answers these letters asking for spiritual guidance, advice, miracles? Not Tilton, nor his prayer ministers, but people hired by that data processing center in Tulsa. And does Word of Faith specify what kind of training they'll receive? No. The orphanage in Haiti, the people's names on there that run the orphanage to support it if the idiots would just read it. Also, after our broadcast, Tilton attacked us for what we said about his missions. The ones he implies are his own. Like this one. Here's how he promotes it on his TV show. Wings of Mercy, a center sponsored by Robert Tilton Ministries. The promotion makes you think this is Tilton's center. But listen to his deposition. You know what Wings of Mercy is? No wonder, since Primetime has learned that Tilton's contribution to that mission is just $300 a month. And what about something else Tilton said in his deposition? He claims that his contribution to his mission in Guatemala is 100% of their needs. You were going to provide 100% of the support that they needed to maintain their operation. So we checked this out. We spoke to the on-site missionary in Guatemala, who told us, in fact, Tilton is only a partial sponsor. And the Guatemalan government has gone public to say that Tilton and his promotional material exaggerate his contribution for personal gain, including his claim of a special invitation. I've been invited to be in the inauguration, the ball, all the celebrations. And That's not true, according to the president's spokesman, Fernando Muniz. No, that the president has invited him to attend the inauguration is by all means false, nor does he have any relation with the government but we cannot take action against a swindler of this caliber. We are going to take this good news of Jesus Christ around the world. You get to help make it happen. Amen. Through your tithes and offerings. And something else about Tilton the missionary. Repeatedly he tells his viewers that their donations enable him to win souls around the world. And we totally, Word of Faith Ministries, you the family church, underwrites totally this particular evangelism unit. Tilton tells followers they finance crusades in countries too poor to pay themselves. He's come all the way from America. America. So Primetime decided to follow Robert Tilton to India this past March. Do you want to please God tonight? Well, there was Tilton passing the collection plates nightly. If each of these people gave just a few pennies, Tilton would get back hundreds of thousands of dollars money taken from the people he himself calls the poorest people on earth. Tilton said, please donate money, please donate money. 
So everybody got disappointed, and then everybody whispered, this is not a crusade, it's a business. And before we leave you, we wanted you to meet two people who decided recently to speak out, to confirm Robert Tilton is not the devoted minister he claims. I never saw him visiting the sick, I never saw him counseling, I never saw him with anybody from the congregation. Connie Cohn was the Tilton's personal secretary in the early 80s. She and her husband were so devoted they donated $30,000 to the church. She says she started out in awe of Tilton until she saw the real man up close. She says Tilton had a library filled with get-rich-quick books, which he even used for his sermons, though he told her not to tell. I saw some of the sermons and some of the quotes from the books it's like he takes some of the things out of the books, incorporates them into the sermons, and uses it as the word of God. Hey, I'm quoting to you what God said. They had a swim pool put in, spent lots and lots of money. Brenda Reynolds also saw Tilton at home. She took care of his children for six years and was head of housekeeping at the ministry for two more. She says Mrs. Tilton ran things at home and the ministry, and the two of them lived like royalty. Oh, yeah, she had diamonds and furs, and I think every pair of shoes she had cost at least 100 bucks, and she had about 150 pair. Him, same thing. We rarely find a message now on repentance. Look at what has become of the world. Church of Christ through you, losing what you should have been. But God waits for his people. God waits for his people. When will they take the stepping stones God has placed in his word? church that has forgotten its foundations, a church that's turned away from its beginnings and begins to become a harlot church. Just, just tell me how blessed I am. Just tell me I'm, I'm, I'm going to be powerful and popular and going to have no trouble in my life. For the, just tell me these things. Watered down. Half-truths. This gospel says, just believe and get saved. There's nothing of repentance. Nothing of godly sorrow. Nothing of turning from your sins. Nothing about taking up your cross and following the Lord. But people who say a little prayer said, you're fine, you're good. People believe that any standard, even if it's the New Testament, is legalism and bondage and law. Any standard is law. I'm under grace, I can do anything. Oh, that's from the devil. Now we've revised that and said, if you can get people for one hour on Sunday morning in the building, that's the church. That's not the church. We can use every device we want to get people for one hour and keep it early and keep it moving and keep it going. But that's not the church Jesus built. And I'm embarrassed to be part of the church of Jesus today because I believe it's an embarrassment to a holy God. Most of our joy is clapping our hands and having a good time and then afterwards we're talking all the dribble of the world. Don't talk to us about holiness or separation from the world. Don't, we don't want to hear that, folks. People today don't want to hear anything they call gloom and doom. If, if it's not smooth, it's gloom and doom. Well, friend, let me tell you lovingly, go to hell and live with all the scum of the earth. You like to drink, go with the drinkers. You like to lust, go with the prostitutes. To have been covered in something deceptive to find in the last moments of your life that the feet coming down the hallway are not taking you to heaven. You can get through the deception your whole life. You can even sing in the choir. And I think we better watch this business of, you know, God loves you, God loves you, and all the bumper sticker sloppy evangelism. Will you remind people of the goodness and the severity of God? Will you remind them that there's a day when mercy is cut off forever? Will you remind them that people pray in hell but nobody ever answers? But in spite of what God has spoken, they create a garment of fig leaves and they cover themselves and say, all is well, all is well. And they seek out a church that won't challenge their sin, that won't expose this hypocrisy for what it is. I'd rather you get mad at me and go to heaven. This so-called love gospel today only reaches the flesh. It can't get to the heart. It can't dig into sin so that there can be a cleansing. 
And if I'm a surgeon of the Holy Ghost, I'm not going to put a bandage on you when you've got cancer sticking out of a bone or, or on your flesh. We're going to say, hey, we got to get in there. It has to be dealt with. And we do. I don't care if you like me, but I'm a good surgeon and I know what I'm doing and I'm going to get your cancer out. This is the reason why some who are listening even now and will be listening to tapes in the future, you just can't lighten up and enjoy these theologically shallow experiences like so many around you are today. Everyone around you is saying, oh, lighten up, lighten up. God's love, God's good, God's kind, God is nice. Come to church in your Bermuda short. Stick your feet on the altar rail. Have a coffee and cookies with us. We'll hear three point messages on nothing about God. But there's a stirring in you. There's a stirring in the true bride in this generation. Now I'm going to tell you something. A diluted gospel is no gospel at all. Businessmen. They were crass businessmen coming into something that God said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. You made it a den of thieves. You're getting over on the people. Out with you. And if you don't believe this is happening in our generation, I challenge you to go to a Christian bookstore this week and find the best sellers. Ask them which are the best sellers and look at them. Look at the covers of the images of men, not the images of God. Five steps to be like me. Five steps to better yourself. Five steps to the new you. Five steps to a wonderful destiny with their glossy faces on the cover. Not so subtly telling the Church of Jesus Christ, if you use the principles of God, you will look like me. In the 14th chapter of Romans, and he says, we, so he writes home, even to believers at the judgment seat. We must all, there's no exception. We must stand at the judgment seat of Christ. You can't send your lawyer, you can't send a representative. Because one day, it doesn't matter if your friends approve of you, it doesn't matter how many albums you sell, one day the Bible says, I'm going to stand in front of the one whose eyes are like fire, and I can't get over on him. All of you that sing in that choir, it's not just if you're on your note, it's why you're on your note. Can you see all the saints of all the ages? And Leonard Ravenel is standing there before a get Christ, whose eyes are full of holiness, where the place is breathing holiness, where there's all the majesty of an awesome God. And he reads the record of my poor life before all the saints of all the ages. Answer God, all you theologians reasoning out my theology. Just answer God, are you pure in heart? And you became enamored with your own beauty. And your whole theological focus now is how you can be smarter, better, better looking, more prosperous. You lost the call of God, church. You made it a place just to make a buck. So out with you. Church of Christ with God, when will you grieve more? Hunger, thirst of the righteousness. Now I'm going to tell you something. A diluted gospel is no gospel at all. To come you, but when the church is in the state we are, the standard is not preached or lived. Or presented, we need to see God back for the standard of this book, not men's standard. What Christ says, I'm not presenting to you some holiness of a holiness movement, I'm teaching to you Christ's word that the only holiness is not heresy. I want to challenge you with everything in me. Put away lifeless religion. Put away empty pursuits of God. Put away all of the deception of the carnal nature. Holy, be ye holy, for I am holy. That's God's words, not mine. Would to God that Episcopalian, Presbyterian, Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal pastors begin to stand up and see what's happening to the church that was once called the Church of Jesus Christ backsliding, turning apostate, turning against the truths of their heaven, of their, their founding fathers. When I see the church in the New Testament, they didn't have stately buildings, they didn't have paid evangelists, they didn't have a lot of money, they didn't have organization, they did, couldn't get on TV and beg, but I'll tell you what they did, they turned the world upside down. But are you big enough to say, Lord, in this crucial hour in human history, let me fill up the sufferings of Christ. But if the Holy Spirit is truly, truly upon you in this generation, you will not be satisfied. You will not be found among those who sit in supposed houses of God with your feet on the altar rail and a cup of coffee in your hand listening to a PowerPoint sermon about a Christ they don't know. You will not be satisfied. 
Because if you're going to get mature in God, all the dwarfs around you will criticize and sneer at you and say you're trying to be holier than the rest of us, eh? For God has not merely given us Jesus Christ, he's given us all things. And because there isn't enough joy in the house of God, we need entertainment. Because entertainment is the devil's substitute for joy. We're living in a time, as the prophet Malachi said, when those who feared the Lord are going to get together one more time and think on his name, and a book of remembrance will be written for them, and they will return, and they will know the difference between those who serve God and those who don't serve him. Folks, we've got to deal with sin. We've got to deal with things that in life, you know, they're divorcing and all these things we have to do something about. We have to face a holy God one day. There's a great trial coming, folks, for everyone. Praise God. He's going to deliver the true believer. I want you to change your message. I'm telling you now, the judgment is at the door. The handwriting is on the wall. The whole world is shaking, and you're amusing this people. Even if you have to bury your theology, sir, just bury it tonight and get right with God. It's turn from your sin, for all this society is about to come under the justice of God. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bringing upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. He shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits he shall know them. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise, and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world.
Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things, and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. If any man teach otherwise, and consent not to wholesome words, even the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud, knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strifes of words, whereof cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmisings, perverse disputings of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness. From such, withdraw thyself. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Even him whose coming is after the workings of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was an hungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? 
Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. his hands on you, trust me. telling me something right now. Uh, you want this in order? Yes! You ready? God. Lord, I pray right now that this holy knee, uh, are getting drunk in the Holy Ghost now. Oh, 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 bam, oh, bam. I baptize you in the name of the ooh, Father, Son, and bam. There, that's the spot. Oh. She was. Oh. Walk over there. Ah! Oh! 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 Ah! Anyways. Bam! 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 What is going on? What was that? What was that? Did you see that? That was crazy. Don't even try to figure it out with your head. That was crazy. Hey, Jacob, grab the computer. Put it up here. Right there is fine. Five other people in my family oh. that have gone blind. Oh. Yes, I'm from Tazan. Oh. Lord, here tonight we're going to baptize you in the name of the Shikaboomba. Bam! In the name of the Tash, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do the mass Shikaboomba. I just want to be a new creation of God. I just. <laughs> bam! 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 We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Bam! 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 Under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Boom! Bam! 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 Release it! Bam! 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 You can take it. Anybody that wants it.
happening? <laughs> I'll tell you what's happening. People are getting healed in Lakeland. You need to come and get some. 